You guys hear me? Everybody? Um, I thought Georgia Tech did a really good job of turning defense into offense. I think they got something like 24 points off turnovers. You know, they have a veteran team, um, and they play like it. They trust each other. They can take you deep into a shot clock, make you guard long possessions, and then get good shots. Obviously, the zone gave us a lot of problems. Um, and we went over three for 20 from three, and we're not going to win. You know, it's going to be hard for us to win when we go three for 20 from three. Um, in the first half, I, I thought we did a really poor job of recognizing our looks against the zone. Um, I was imploring them to, to drive the ball and throw, play off the post. They were playing behind Odie in the post, and we just didn't get it to them. In the second half, I think you saw us get the ball in there more, and a lot of better things happened. You know, that's my fault. I've got to do a better job of preparing them for zone. Obviously, we don't play a lot of zone. And so this is really the first time that they've really seen it in a game, uh, a game situation. Um, you know, in the, in the half court defense, I, I thought we played, we were tough. Uh, you know, we, we didn't get beat on the glass. We were even, um, but we, you know, got caught up a few times, uh, not communicating on the Princeton actions. And those are hard to guard. And they got some wide open looks or got us in the blender and, and got good looks, but they have a good team. Um, they're well coached, and um, I can see why you know they beat they've won the games that they've won. Steve, I guess first off, um, you know you're obviously brought in to to this program to help it start winning eventually, and I wonder if this first loss was something that I guess you were kind of getting ready for, maybe to pay attention to how the team responded or just kind of you know evaluate the scene of that locker room after that loss. Um, was that I, you know, kind of what was your approach and in, in going into a losing locker room and seeing how this respond? Well, that's, um, you know, Ethan, I, I'm never really too emotional after a loss. I'm probably a lot more emotional or maybe angry after a win because it's never as good as you think it is and it's never as bad as you think it is. And I thought um, they didn't quit. I thought they kept playing. They scrapped. They, um, they got loose balls late in the game. They got rebounds. And so I think it's um, it's something that we have to build on. We don't have anything to build on right now. I mean, this is the second game we've played since, you know, a month off. And so um, I'm not going to go in there and beat them down by no means, you know. Uh, and so um, I tried to remain positive, you know, with them, but realistic. And the realistic number is the turnovers. I mean, and they're by our guards, you know, against the uh, Catawba, it was our bigs. And today, you know, we have, you know, a point, our point guards with, uh, okay, we played Jacoby at the point, we played Davian at the point some, and we play Carter at the point, and that's what, 12 turnovers, you know, half of them. And so it's hard to win that way. And those, and a lot of those turnovers lead to what I call atomic bombs, which is layups in the half, you know, they're just unguardable, you know, and so, um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't go in there and hammer them by no means. Um, they know I'm not happy. They're not happy. They came here to win. I came here to win, you know, but we have to build on it and, and move forward. Speaking of those turnovers, you, I know you're kind of watching in real time and haven't gotten the chance to do a full evaluate yet, but can you see what's going on to, to cause some of those turnovers, especially in those, in those point guys that you just mentioned? Yeah, I don't think they really understand where they're, where they're looking. I think they're seeing things out there that aren't there and trying to make plays that aren't there. And, and you have to pass it to the open man on time, on target. And you also have to penetrate and drive the ball and find the open man. And I thought we were playing way too much, you know, around the perimeter, you know, no, everything was East and West, very little was North and South. And so um, it's hard to play against zone like that. You gotta have guys that are willing to punch it in there. And then you have to play off the post. And that, that was the most disappointing part to me about it was they were so extended, you know, in their zone that we, the, the post was, Odie was in there one-on-one -on -one in the post. And we didn't get it to him. Very first possession of the second half after time, you know, after halftime, we went in there and he got a wide open shot, you know. And so um, that probably more is just 
them not understanding where to look and how, and, and not making the right plays. Right, speaking of Odie, we, were you happy with his production in the post? And then also, what are your thoughts on what Isaiah Mucius was able to put together tonight? I thought those guys played uh, less. I thought they really broke, played well tonight. I thought they played really hard, you know, and good things happen to you when you play hard. And, you know, Zay's had a really good attitude, even though, you know, he's had some tough moments shooting the ball. I knew he'd come around and he did tonight, but he got a lot of those by, you know, by playing hard and, and uh, Odie too. And, you know, when you don't have a, when you have a very small margin of error, like we do, you know, if you go back and look too in the first half and we missed some shots right around the basket, not just Odie, but we had some point blank shots that we didn't get to, we didn't put in and we have to make those. And, um, I thought, I thought for the most part, Odie and, and um, Zay did a re really good job of, of finishing around the basket. And we did a much better job of getting Odie the ball in the second half. We didn't get him the ball in the first half. What was it that Georgia Tech did tonight, especially early, to kind of get you guys, to make you all uncomfortable offensively? I mean, I, they didn't do anything we hadn't prepared for. You know, it's just we didn't, we didn't penetrate the zone. We tried to play around the horn, and you can't play against zone like that. And so they didn't really – they didn't do anything different than they've done, in, you know, what I've seen on film up until this point, we knew they would play zone. We knew they play zone. They play man. The best way to beat zone is to make shots and get them out of it. You know, and we didn't do that. And we didn't even get a chance to shoot it because, you know, we were turning it over. I remember vividly um, early in the game, we got the ball to, we tried to get, we wanted to get it to the baseline and drive it because that's when their big comes out. He has to come out to guard that guard. Well, we did it one time, drove it, penetrated, kicked it, and got a wide open three and made it. But then we didn't do it again. And we're, we're, and we just were making passes that I don't know that just weren't there. I, I didn't see what I don't – I'll have to watch. But I, what I saw live, I don't even know why they were throwing the passes that they were throwing. Steve? How do you guys feel or how do you feel about the durability, the conditioning level of this team going into a week you're set to play, knock on wood, Virginia and Duke? Yeah. Well, Josh, I think we're getting in better shape. Um, we had some guys log uh, some longer minutes tonight, it looks like. I have to look at it. Um, you know, Zay played 28 and Odie 28 and Jacoby 25 and Davey 29 and Carter played 23. I mean, um, I, I like to get some more production out of out of uh, Wilkins and Johnson. Um, and you know, one thing, Josh, that we've had the first time, I think it was, I don't know, it was the day after our game. So it's been January one. We finally had everybody on the court for practice, and so that way we've been able to go a little harder, a little bit longer, because we got subs. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it's the truth. And so I think this week we'll, you know, we'll take some steps forward, I hope, you know, in our conditioning. Um, but, you know, we don't have a lot of time because of on a Sunday game, you know, we have to turn around and fly back tonight. And then, you know, we'll go twice tomorrow, just walk through in the morning and practice in the afternoon. We can only practice Tuesday in the afternoon. And then we got a bus to Virginia. So uh, it, it'll, we'll have to be mindful of their legs a little bit. Thanks, Coach. Coach, how would you describe the impact your COVID break had as you try to build chemistry and, and get the guys familiar with your system since this is a new team? Devastating. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to put it. I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, there is none. And it's not their fault. Um, we started back from zero um and 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 now we're, we're facing this gauntlet so it's not the players fault at all it's 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 there's no there's there can be no blame for them if it's just it's just, we're just, it's just the victim of the circumstances that we are in but again and and i say this to the players lauren and, I, and I, nobody's gonna feel sorry for us so you know 
we've got to come out. We've got to find a way to fix it. I got to do a better job coaching. I got to, I got to find a way to help them the best I can help them, you know, and that's what I told them after the game, you know, I'm going to do better. I got to do better to, to help them, you know, and they got to do better helping themselves by not, you know, turning the ball over at that, at the rate that we did, especially against the zone. Coach, I understand that Georgia Tech isn't Longwood and isn't Delaware State, but do you believe your team was actually playing better back on November 27th than the, what they were playing tonight? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's even close. Um, I, 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 we had a good vibe. Um, we were moving in the right direction. They were – and plus, you got to remember, we had Ian and Tariq, too. Um, and I felt good, even though, you know – it was a hard fought game against Longwood. We found a way to win, you know, and, and I thought we had really good film and, and practice on Sunday. I was looking forward to playing again real fast, you know, just to get them back out there and getting Odie. We hadn't even had Odie yet. And so um, I thought we were, yeah, but, but guys, there's no way, there's no possible way we could look the same um, today as we did then because that was five months of practicing plus two games with, with no stoppage, you know, and now we've, we've had to totally start over. But again, I mean, it's a, it's a common theme that, you know, we can talk about it until we're blue in the face, but it's not going to change. And, and so, uh, you know, we got to fight through it. Anything else for coach guys? All right. You're good coach. All right. Thanks guys. Thank you. Yep. All right, guys. First up will be Isaiah Musius. And uh, go ahead and fire for the course, first question, and he'll get himself off mute. Yeah. Isaiah, I guess just take us through, you know, kind of getting that breakthrough game tonight. Um, you know, you get over 20 points. Um, you know, what kind of went into tonight and, and making that performance for you? I'm just trying to win. Like, we haven't played in over a month. Um, first ACC road game. You know, I'm one of the veteran guys who played multiple ACC games. I've played at every single venue. i played every single team, home and away. Um, so I just tried to do everything I can to win the game. Like, that's what I wanted to do is, like, come out and win my first road game. And, you know, you know, we didn't have the outcome we wanted. But, you know, I think the guys fought hard. You know, after being out for about a month and a half, like, they fought really hard. And I think there's a lot of – blocks to build off that going into, you know, our next game is UVA and then forward into more of the season. I guess just, you know, you get into the part of the game where the lead got, got bigger or the lead for Georgia Tech got bigger. And it, I think it kind of let you guys loosen up a little bit more. Did you guys kind of feel that as well? And you maybe were able to work out a little bit more stuff and, and kind of the late game scenarios. Um, I think the one thing we just like talked about, even when the, the lead, Grew was just fighting like yo like no matter what his outcome is like fight for us like we're fighting because we want to get better as a team and like we saw positive outcomes throughout the game we started chip away a little bit obviously we didn't get to finish out the game but I think it, when it if it's a game where it's a tight game I think we win that game easily just because of how you know we made adjustments going into the second half and played a lot better on the defensive end and shared the ball more and was able to execute offensively and I think you know next game we're gonna do what we did in the second half in the first half and then further on throughout the game. Isaiah, what did you Isaiah, what did you think was for the turnovers? What did you say? What did you think was the biggest reason for the turnovers? Um, you know, definitely it could be nerves. Um, you know, being a little bit soft with the passes. Um, you know, trying to fill out the defense. You know, they played this weird like one three one and it was kind of tough to kind of read. Um, and the guys are kind of trying to get a feel of it, but I think we did a better job in the second half you know, playing and playing with each other and kind of getting into the into the paint and getting a couple of paint touches in order to score. So um, those things that we can clean up, like easy, making easier passes, not trying to go home run passes every time, um, being secure with the ball, making sharper passes. Um, and I think the guys are going to clean it up. Like we're confident in, and we're going to continue to get better each and every day in practice. So, so on to the next one for sure. So you mentioned that you've been to every ACC venue. So just – give me a sense for how expectations meet reality of being in a place like Georgia Tech with no fans and later this week experiencing that at Cameron. It's crazy that we're just talking about like 
playing at Georgia Tech my freshman year with the with the stadium filled was crazy. Like their energy is is unbelievable. And same thing UVA. Like UVA when we played them my freshman year was I think they were like number two or number one in the country. Like there it was a sold out game. Like it felt like probably an NCAA tournament, which I want to feel. Um, so it, you know, it was, it's definitely a, a different feeling with this COVID situation. I mean, but, you know, we're playing the game that we love and we're, we're going to, you know, continue to play no matter, you know, what the circumstances are. Yeah, I'd say I know the outcome didn't go the way you wanted, but how did it feel to, to kind of put together a complete game yourself and, and put some points on the board and see some shots drop for you? Um, it was good. I mean, my teammates found me like they, you know, they trusted in me. They know that. You know, I have, I'm one of the vet guys that know I've been through the ACC and they continue to trust me. You know, when I got hot, they fed me the ball. Um, you know, and it's going to be somebody different every night. Like, you know, we're going to have – we have a team full of guys who can score the basketball. You know, we got a lot of shooters. So, you know, I have confidence that each and every guy on my team is going to bring it every single night. So, you know, maybe some night Jonah might have 21. Maybe Ish might have 21. Maybe, you know, David might have 21. Odie might have 21. Jacoby, like every single person on our team can – contribute that way you know and I think throughout the season like we're going to see a lot of guys step up and you know bring a lot of things to the table and and once we get that it's going to be you know we're going to get the wheels moving what do you think is the biggest thing that you've learned from this game Isaiah what do you think the biggest takeaway as from a team perspective that you guys will get out of this um there were fighters like there could have been at some point in the game where we could have lost by 30 like we could have folded and said, like, we're down by 15 at half or whatever, and we could have lost by 30, but we kept fighting. And that's the that's the, 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 the message that Coach Forbes talks to us every single day is, like, fight no matter what situation is because you can change the outcome of anything. So I know going into the rest of the season, like, we're going to do that. And when it comes to those games where, you know, we need that last stop, I got faith that we're going to get it. Can you describe how crazy the practice circumstances have been? Coach Forbes said quite literally that last week was the first week you guys were able to get together and have a practice with subs. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the all COVID stuff, like we, we were finally getting like most of the team back. And, you know, we've been just pushing ourselves like, you know, guys are out. So we're trying to get back into shape. Um, and, you know, we're pushing ourselves every single day, like just to get better pushing each and every one of us, like every single person on this team has a part, like from the, the walk-ons doing the scout team, from, you know, the guys who are playing, like they, everybody plays a big part in this, you know, like, and the scout team did a great job, you know, doing what Georgia Tech's offense do, and they're going to continue to do a great job throughout the entire season. So they're going to be a big part in preparing us for these games in the ACC. Um, but, you know, it, it's been tough, like, but we're getting back into it and the practices are hard and we're pushing, pushing each other, but we're going to continue to get better. Thanks, sir. Anything else for Isaiah, guys? All right. Thanks, Isaiah. All right, guys, we have uh, Davia now. And uh, with that, we'll open it up for questions for him. Hey, Coach was kind of talking about um, wanting to see the ball get a little more Odie in the post and I guess happened in uh, well for actually in the first half we weren't really looking for him as much as we should have been Odie was open a lot down there and the second half we finally got it to him and I mean he contributed as much as he can in the second half we, we should have been looking for him early in the first half because, I mean he finished the game off really, really strong so the same looks they said too we just went how do you keep the turnovers in, in a game like this from, from I guess, building up too much on you guys and getting frustrated? Uh, yeah, yeah. We just got to do a better job of executing. You know what I'm saying? We, we were making good reads, but sometimes it was our time. And maybe it was open a little earlier. Maybe it's open a little later. But, I mean, we we were making the right reads. We just weren't delivering the passes. So you all fit in this offense together? Oh uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a lot that goes into it. I mean, like they said, we we've been out for a, a whole month. You know what I'm saying? We just like Forbes also said too, we just not getting uh, subs in practice. So we just got to get back in the groove of things and find our rhythm again. I think we'll be fine. And, and do you believe you guys are playing better as a team in late November than what you are right now, for instance? 
Uh, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I mean, uh, like I said before, I think we just got to get back in the groove of things. I mean, I, I do think we were moving the ball well uh, first two games between uh, Delaware State and Longwood. So we just got to get back to, you know what I'm saying, do what we do, moving the ball, sharing the ball, things like that. And I, and I know we will. With uh, preparation and keep preparing and practicing hard, I know we'll get to where we need to be. Avian, what, what about their zone made it so difficult to to play against to get anything on offense against it? Oh uh, yeah, they were they were really big and they were really active. I mean, the second half we did a lot better of uh, attacking the gaps and penetrating the zone and getting pain touches. And once we did that, you know what I'm saying, we were able to uh, score really. You know what I'm saying. So it was just a matter of fact we had to be a lot more aggressive than what than what we were in the first half. I mean, we scored 33 points in the second half, only 21 in the first half. So a lot of that just had to do with our aggression on the offense end. Can you pinpoint without looking at the film or without thinking back on the game too much of the, like why you guys weren't as aggressive to start the game as you were in the second half? Uh, I, I would say uh, it mainly started with paint touches. You weren't getting as many paint touches. And that can either be off the dribble or that could be uh, a paint touch, a pass to Odie. So, you know what I'm saying? We, we threw it down into Odie. I think Odie had 12 points in the second half, you know what I'm saying? So things like that. I mean, that's big. So pain touches was really the main thing that we needed. I asked Isaiah about it, but um, did, did the second half just kind of let you guys loosen up a little bit and, and kind of let you figure out, you know, stuff like that would be working if, if you went to it and, and really kind of let you get a little more of a flow? Yeah, it was, I mean, there's definitely some nerves a little bit in the first half. In the second half, we just slowed down. Uh, we went to – uh, coach made a great adjustment. Uh, we ran uh, three across in the second half, and it's, I mean, it worked out good for us. It allowed us to penetrate and attack the gaps and get pain touches, like I said before. So I credit a lot of coaches to that for uh, making that adjustment. Defensively, uh, how disappointing was it to see DeVoe go off early in the first half and then see Alvarado kind of go nuts in the second half? What could have been done differently against those two guys? Well, I mean, both, both of those guys are great players. Uh, we had a plan in place uh, of how we want to guard those guys. And sometimes we didn't execute what we planned, our schemes on defense. And I mean, we worked hard in practice these last two days to prepare for not only them two guys, but just the team in general. So, I mean, it's just, just a few mistakes we made here and there that we is. But the good thing about it is, you know what I'm saying, we can clean it up. It's not something that's, you know what I'm saying, we can't fix or something that's just, that's just something that's like out of our control. Like we can control that and we can fix that. So, I mean, that's the good thing about it. Anything else for the Davian guys? All right. Thanks, Davian. Thank you.